Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another uh, quarantine special for today. And this is Ask Dave number 273. And today we're going to talk about measurement error. I've been looking at the Samlex SEC1235M, which is the reference station power supply, and something about it has been just bugging me. And so today I thought I'd fix it. And I thought, well, when I fix this little thing, why don't I talk about measurement errors and just get some terms out there so we all have the same thing to talk about. What I removed today was a bias error, and we'll see what that means in just a moment. Let's go to the charts. Here is what has been bugging me. There are two meters on the front of the Samlex 1235M. There's the ammeter and the voltmeter. Now, the needle on the ammeter reads, when the thing is off, minus one amp. And that has, it drives me nuts. I'm just the kind of guy who that would drive nuts. Now, there is a way to make changes in this, to adjust this. And that's this. You put a screwdriver in to that little screw there and just gently turn it back and forth and it may cause the needle to go either way but you should be able to zero the needle using uh, a simple screwdriver be careful with these they're plastic they're fragile turn them slowly um, you may have to go back so that the meter will go the other way and so on but this is reduces the bias error so I want to talk about um, how to make measurements. Estimation is the art and science of making an educated guess about some value in nature. Now underlying this is the idea that we will never know what a value like voltage or current actually is precisely to the last decimal place. We can't, but we can estimate what it is. Now, we can't see electricity, but of course we see what it does, and we can see what it does by using a meter, a voltmeter, or an ammeter, or something like that. We can't measure electrical parameters with 100% accuracy. It's impossible. But we can estimate what the values are. Now, if you really want to get into this, you can estimate the quality of your estimate, but that gets kind of weird. Okay, now we need to recognize that no measuring equipment is completely accurate, and that includes everything from the little voltmeter that you got at Harbor Freight Tools to some really expensive piece of equipment that costs thousands of dollars. There are always errors. The fundamental concept is that we are always dealing with at least some measurement, and to take that into account uh, when we look at equipment, how equipment is operating, and so on. We've got to have the usual discussion about accuracy and precision. Accuracy is the difference between the actual value, whatever it is, and the measured value. For example, we can say that the value that we measure of a resistor will be within 5% of the actual resistance. And that's actually a pretty good measurement right there. Uh, precision is how many digits the instrument gives us. For example, the resistor could be 572.3265 ohms according to the meter. But of course, if it's only within 5% of the actual resistance, only the first maybe two digits of that have any meaning at all. The excess precision does us no good, and we must not confuse excess precision with accuracy. Now the difference, and, and I'm going to throw just a little bit of math, but I'm going to really be careful to, to uh, walk you through it here. I'm going to walk you through this here. Uh, the difference between our estimated value and the real value is the estimation error. So here's the value that we estimate here, okay. The actual value, and the, that is the error. Now, one way of expressing error is, and you'll see the sense in this when, when I take it, you, a polynomial is just a way of expressing a formula. The error is going to be some function of the actual value. And uh, we can equate it to a bias error 
plus a scale factor error times the actual value plus a second order error times the actual value squared. And you, you can take this on uh, to third, fourth, fifth if you want to. Uh, but usually these three uh, will tell us what we need to know. The bias or zeroth order, it says zeroth because it's the value to the zeroth power, which is just one. It's an error that's always there, like that stupid one amp uh, minus one amp measure on uh, the power supply. The error doesn't depend on the value being measured. In fact, the power supply is off. The scale factor error is linearly related to the value being measured. So as the value goes up, the error goes up. A second order error is related to the square of the value being measured. Let's just take a look at some pictures. It's a lot easier. Here's a completely accurate meter, which of course no such instrument actually exists. And the difference between the actual value and the estimated value is zero. So if you have six volts in, it shows six volts, period. Just six volts. Now here's a reading with a bias error. This thing has a bias error of one volt. The difference between the actual value and the estimate is a constant. This is a common error, and this is the error we were looking at on that meter. Uh, this is called a bias error or an offset error. And in this one where I really exaggerated, the offset is one volt. Well, it was one amp. One volt. So uh, if the actual value is six volts, it'll read seven volts. Now here's a scale factor error. Now notice the shape of the curve's a little different. Uh, you get down toward the bottom where the zeros are, and there is no error. But the error is a multiple of the actual value. It grows as the actual value grows. Some scale factor error is common in instruments, not to this degree. I mean, this is a 10% scale factor error. So an actual 6-volt reading gives us a readout of 6.6 .6 volts. Okay, now here is a really exaggerated second-order error. The error grows as the square of the value being measured. It's usually called a second-order error. Now you've heard the phrase second-order effects, things like that. Uh, colloquially, the expression means um, unexpected results or uh, something you weren't really looking for, but you certainly can look for it. This is, uh, all measurements have at least a tiny bit of this, but not usually large in amateur radio. Now note that higher order, third, fourth, etc., are hopefully imperceptible. But in this case, with a rather major scale factor, or uh, second order error, the uh, six volts in reads 9.6 .6 volts out, Oh boy. Okay, now there are many, many, many other possible sources of error. And I've just kind of put down a few here. There are frequency related errors. For example, in an oscilloscope, sometimes the higher you go in frequency, the more the voltage error is. That's common. Phase distortion errors where uh, you're getting uh, signals at the wrong point in the cycle to measure them. There are time delay errors like jitter and things like that. There are errors induced by impedance mismatches. If you're trying to measure something, at one, let's say you've got um, a 70 ohm cable and you're measuring with uh, a simple antenna meter that expects 50 ohms. It's going to give you a, a little bit weird uh, reactions sometimes. There are what are called modeling errors. If we think that when we measure an inductor, the only thing in the inductor is inductance, well, that's a modeling error because in actual practice, you've got to take into account the turn-to-turn -turn capacitance. And what you think is just a simple coil will have capacitance and therefore may well resonate at uh, a frequency that's within what you're working in. Uh, so you've got to be careful about that. Noise, of course, impacts measurements. Noise is not something you can get away from. 
uh, one of the, you know, s some of the basic laws of thermodynamics tell us there will always be noise. It is possible that there are higher order errors, tertiary, quaternary, etc., that go uh, third order, fourth order, fifth order, so on. There's also a lack of precision. You, you just don't have enough precision in your readout to really tell. And it goes on and on and on. Now, in ham radio, you need when you take a measurement to ask how good is your measurement. For amateur radio, usually a measurement of two or three decimal points is good enough, like 13.8 volts. You don't need to know whether it's 13.8125, just 13.8 is fine. Uh, current, um, you know, maybe it's within an amp is all you need, watts and so on. You don't need much. Now, for some things, we do want much better accuracy in ham radio, and that is time and frequency. Because you want your display, especially on the new modern radios, which read out to the nearest hertz, you want them to be accurate. Now, for example, my FTDX 3000, I did a measurement using the process they recommended in the book and found out that the built-in VFO was 4 hertz off. And there was a little adjustment I could make for that. That was actually a scale factor error. And um, I think that I was doing there because it was taken at 10 megahertz. Okay, now let's go back and look at this adjusted meters. This is the IC7300 is on in receive mode. And you'll see that the ammeter is up a little bit and the voltmeter is way over there. Let's look at them one at a time. About the best we can say on that ammeter reading in terms of precision is it's a titch above one amp. A titch. Um, that's a technical term. Uh, if we look at the actual uh, handbook for the radio, it says that the power consumption on standby is 0 0.9 amps and the maximum audio is going to give us about 1.25 amps. Well, I didn't have it turned up very far, and it looks just a little bit over one amp, which is right in the middle there of uh, what it talks about. Okay, now let's look at the voltmeter. Now, um, first of all, look at the scale. Each small mark is half a volt. So it's 0, 5, 10, 15, and I've marked where 11, 12, 13, 13.5 and 14 R. And about the best we can say from looking at this needle, and I've got the camera looking straight on at the meter, so we're not getting parallax problems. You do see the shadow from the lighting, but we're not getting parallax problems. Parallax problem comes when the, the needle is out away from the face, so if you look at it at an angle, you'll get a wrong reading. You need to look straight at these analog meters. About 13.8 plus or minus a tenth of a volt is about the best we can say. So that is about two and a half digits of precision uh, for this. And uh, by the way, it's supposed to be a 13.8 volt meter. Uh, this reading is certainly indicative of 13.8 volts. Well, there you have it. Uh, my curiosity about uh, my meter, I got the meter all corrected, seems to be reading right and so on. And um, a little bit of a, a, a side excursion on accuracy and stuff like that. So I hope you find that helpful. I'm going to toot my own horn now, wherever it is. There it is. Okay, here's the horn. So please check out decastler.com slash support for different ways that you can support this channel. Uh, and I appreciate the tremendous support, uh, moral and otherwise, that I'm getting from everybody during this uh, quarantine period where we're all stuck inside. One of the nicest things about ham radio is the ability to talk to other people. So, uh, oh yes, got to do this. We're done tooting my own horn, and until we next meet, 73.